today's DIYs. Not gonna lie, wasn't thinking I was gonna bring these to you because time is running out, but you know what? Better late than never. There's always next year to use them. Hey everybody, welcome back to Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose. Yes, in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, mm -hmm, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Well, today I'm bringing to you a couple red, white, and blue DIYs, so now you know why I say time is running out. Now these DIYs I almost didn't bring to you because I was running short on time, but you know what, I said the heck with it. These DIYs turned out amazing, I love them, so I figured I'm gonna bring them to you today and why not? If you wanna do them, you'll have them for next year. It's never too late. I can't wait to show you what I've come up with today for the three foot porch stand that I have and a quick and easy front door wreath that I absolutely love the outcome of. So I'm gonna quit my yabbing, let's jump into it and let's do some red, white and blue DIYing last minute style, cause why not? Cause we can, let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations crafter of the day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. This here is the three foot stand up sign that I found at Michael's on clearance for $10. It is double sided. Now this is a series that I started about four months ago. Starting off with this Hello Spring, I think that these are such fun pieces to DIY, whether they're inside or on your front porch, my summer one here. An alternative to these would be using some of Dollar Tree's plaques, these longer plaques, you get four of them. And just using some jumbo popsicle sticks, you can easily attach two signs together. If you want a stand-up sign like I'm doing today, you're gonna need four of them. And just by attaching all four plaques together, you will not only have a nice size plaque, but you'll have the length and the width that is needed for this DIY. I picked up more than a handful of these stand-up signs because I knew I was going to want to DIY them for my porch for each of the seasons and holidays. I'm going to start off by going in with some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of cashew. And although this color is very similar to the raw wood color that this sign comes in, I'm going with that red, white, and blue theme, but I'm gonna rustic it up and that cashew makes for the perfect rustic white. So I'm gonna give this plaque a good full base coat of the cashew. Using some painter's tape, I measured down six inches from the top or the bottom, I don't remember what part I started off with. And I'm gonna go ahead and tape that off. But because this is a sign, I do wanna make sure that this is even. So I am going to take my ruler and make sure that I have an even six inches all the way across, which I didn't. So yeah, measure twice, paint once. Or is it measure twice, cut once? Well, in this instance, it's measure twice, paint once. I'm good to go with my six inches all the way across. And to this section here, I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's Ocean and a bit of Hello Hobbies Brown. Mix those two together just a bit to rustic up that blue, take some of the stark royal blue out of it because remember, I'm going rustic with this. If you wanna go traditional, then there's no need to add the brown, but by adding a bit of brown to say your yellows, your oranges, your blues, your reds, you can kind of mute it out a bit and give it a more age distressed look. A couple coats later, it's dry. Pulling off that tape is so satisfying at the result. My stand up sign is nine inches wide. 
I want to add stripes to it. So because it's nine inches, that's going to give me three even stripes at three inches wide. So I'm going to go ahead and just measure three inches twice to give me three stripes all the way down here. And this is the other end of the sign that I measured six inches. I guess this is the top measured six inches from the top. Again, using some painter's tape, going to go ahead and mark that off with painter's tape so I can go ahead and paint my stripes. The red that I'm using is some of Waverly's Crimson with a bit of that Hello Hobby Brown. It's a nice rustic red that's gonna go with my nice rustic cashew cream color white for this rustic red, white, and blue DIY sign. I like to DIY with stencils. They're reusable, they're budget friendly, these craft smart ones you can get at Michael's for about $5. Not only do I like to work with stencils, but they are a great alternative to the Cricut and vinyl because they are reusable and they're budget friendly. I like the look of stenciled paint, so that's why I work with them often when it comes to these signs. I'm going to go ahead and place my stencils on my sign. Now for this, I'm not going to use painter's tape to hold them in place because I have this Loctite spray adhesive. This is a low adhesive spray adhesive that is repositionable. So just by spraying it on the back of my stencil, I can place my stencil in place and it really is going to keep my stencil from moving and it's going to stop a lot of that bleedage that happens. Now, I know there are ways to stop the bleedage by actually putting a coat of the base coat that I used first, but I feel like that's just a step that adds to the time of this DIY. So just by using a spray adhesive, you're gonna get the same outcome. Once you've got your stencils placed, it is best to use one of Dollar Tree's sponge dabbers. Sponge dabbers are a great way to stop bleedage and you get a nice full coverage in about one or two coats. And so just by dabbing that paint on, not putting a lot of paint on your sponge dabber, you're gonna get a nice even coverage. And again, you're not gonna get as much bleedage versus using a paintbrush and brushing it on. You're gonna see those brush strokes and that's not something you wanna see when you're doing a piece like this. I thought it would be fun to kind of alternate the colors for this date or the year, I guess I should say. So I'm gonna do a one and a seven in the red and the other seven and the six in blue, my rustic blue. I know I am, I am all over the place with this DIY, but while those numbers are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my tape here at the bottom. Now, my numbers are dry, so I can go ahead and remove my stencil, a stencil that is reusable, by the way. Now, if there is some bleedage, I don't worry about it much. I don't mind going in with the cashew paint, which is the base coat that I used, and cleaning up my lines. Again, if you wanna use that cashew first on your stencil to try and cut down on the bleedage, you can. But to me, either way, it takes time, so I'll just clean up my lines. I had some of these larger stars in my stash. Honestly, I don't know where I got these. I might have got them at Michael's. I really, I don't know where I got these. But I had a few of them, so I decided just to take three of them I'm gonna paint two of them with that uh -huh, rustic blue. And I'm just gonna do one with the rustic red. Now these are pieces that I like to add to the sides of my sign, just to add, again, a bit of dimension. I like things to stick off of the sign because I feel like it adds character and personality to a piece, and so that's what I'm gonna use these stars for. Now, now, you all know I am all about the stitching, so if that whole plaque had stitching, why wouldn't these stars? Now, I feel like I do need to reiterate that when I bring you these DIYs, I really am just bringing you the concept, the idea of the DIY. I don't expect that everybody is going to have my exact style or taste. I don't expect that everybody's gonna like stitching. 
I personally like stitching, so I do these DIYs to suit my style, my decor, my liking, so that way I can utilize them in my house. If I didn't do that, then I would have to do double the DIYs and the out-of-pocket cost would be just astronomical to me and so it wouldn't be sustainable for me to do that. And so I do do them in my decor style so I can utilize them and really, that is what DIYing is all about. It is taking what you like, leaving what you don't, getting creative and making a piece your own. And so I highly encourage that. And I highly encourage you to send me some pictures on either Facebook or Instagram because I absolutely love seeing the spins, the twists that all of you put on these recreations of my DIYs. I also found these stars in my stash. I found a ton of stars. It is amazing what you find when you go through your craft stash and you actually organize it. I tell you, I have saved so much time and money from not having to rebuy things that I thought I had that I couldn't find because now everything has a place and I know where everything is. I have a bin for 4th of July. So I just grab that bin. I kind of look through it to see what I have in there. And these stars were in there. There was a whole Ziploc baggie full of them. So they are perfect for this DIY. I'm going to say that these wood stars are stars that you can get at Michael's by Createology. And they are fairly inexpensive and they come in a variety pack with several different sizes. And so, yeah, that is where I am almost positive these came from. And so for this DIY, three different size stars were perfect. I've got four of the smaller ones, but I ended up going with a fifth one and three of the medium sized stars. I am laughing all over again as I'm editing this. This here is the bottom of my sign. Mm hmm And this here is the top. I painted this upside down. <laughs> Oh my goodness, but thank goodness there are brackets here that I can easily unscrew because that kind of would have stunk. If I don't know what I would have done if I couldn't unscrew these brackets and flip it around. I might have just stood it up and leaned it against the door maybe, but luckily I can unscrew these brackets, flip it around, and nobody is none the wiser that I originally painted this upside down. Ah, yes, there we go. Much better. Okay, okay, let's get back to the DIYing. The placement of my stars, I am going to put the three medium-sized ones here at the top in the blue, which was the bottom, but now it's the top. Haha. <laughs> and I'm gonna use some wood glue. This is a wood glue by Crazy Glue that you can get in the tool section at Dollar Tree. Mm-hmm. I love this wood glue. I am using wood glue instead of hot glue because like I have said in several videos before, when you are placing embellishments like this, it is a lot easier to use a glue that you can actually, yes, kind of space things out. It gives you a little bit of time to get just the perfect placing versus when you put hot glue, once you put that star down, you're kind of in it, you're stuck. You're not moving that unless you pull it up, risking damaging your piece. Here at the bottom, I'm gonna use the four smaller stars that I actually painted in the cashew. I'm gonna put two stars in each stripe. The center stripe there, the cashew one. I hadn't thought about putting a star in there, but once I had placed my cashew stars, I figured I needed a one red star in the center there, so I went ahead, pulled out another star, painted it red, and there I was happy with the way it looked. And you will see that I also did add a red line across the top there of that, I guess, cream stripe because it just looked funny not having it separated from the year and the stripes there. I know I overthink everything, but it really, I, I couldn't unsee it once I saw it, so I had to fix it. Now this would be the part of the DIY, the stitching part where I turned on Hulu and fun fact about Kelly, I love documentaries. I do, I love, love, love them. So I watched a documentary or two because I was on a marathon of stitching. This was not a race. 
This was definitely a marathon because this piece had a lot of stitching. Stitching isn't something that you can race through. It's something that you just kind of got to take your time with. And because there was so much that I knew I wanted to add to this piece to really finish it off, I just took my time and watched a documentary. These stars. These are the stars that I wanted to hang off the sides of my sign. But in doing that, because this is a double-sided sign, when I DIY the other side, guess what? You're gonna see the back side of the stars and that is not gonna look good. So to remedy that problem, just by putting some Velcro on the back of these stars, when the season or holiday is over, I can take these stars off, put them in a Ziploc baggie and store them and pull them out when I need them again, when it's July. I love these wreath boards at Dollar Tree. This is the jumbo size. It's a larger one. I like a large wreath. I love wreaths in general. That is another fun fact about me if you're new to my channel. So with this wreath board, I am again going to use some burlap. I have a ton of this burlap in my stash from, yes, cleaning and organizing my crafts. So I am trying to work my way through using some of the stuff that I have in my stash to save money. For these boards, if you just cut, I guess, a strip of burlap or tooling or mesh from Dollar Tree, this is about eight inches. Go ahead and gather it in the center. You're gonna fold it over just like so once you've pinched it. And this end here, yep, it's gonna go inside a zip tie that you wove through the holes of your wreath board. Now you can see that I only put the zip tie in two holes. I didn't redo a hole or put a, two zip ties in one hole. Yeah, that's what I mean, two zip ties in one hole. I just kind of spaced it out and that's what you wanna do for that first whole row on the wreath board. Now, when you go on to the second row, okay, hold on a second there. We're not gonna do the second row. We're gonna go down to the third row and place another row of blue burlap mesh or tooling. Now that I've got my two rows here, I'm gonna go into the third row, which is the dots right below this burlap. And I figured I would put my zip ties in ahead of time. But with this one, we are going to put two zip ties in each hole because I wanna give the center of this a fuller look because I'm gonna use a white burlap. If I skip a hole, it's going to look staggered. And so with this one, unlike the others, we are going to put two zip ties in each hole. Now I will tell you, if you want to put a zip tie in every hole, you're gonna have a fuller wreath. I like the fullness that I have in this wreath. This is the same fullness that I went with for my sunflower wreath. And so I'm pretty happy with it. I am loving the way this looks, but the center here is missing something. The center of my wreath needs one of these wood plaques from Dollar Tree, love these, but I really dislike the holes. So we're gonna fill that hole in with some spackling and this plaque is going to get a good couple coats of my rustic red. Now, when I'm painting this plaque, I'm not gonna worry so much about that elevated home word. I'm just gonna paint, I'm gonna get the base red on there. There are a lot of little nooks and crannies on this plaque, and so trying to be neat and detailed with it really is just gonna take more time than it needs. If you just go ahead and slap that paint on there, you can paint that home word and any red that ends up on it. I've got the base coat with this that I'm happy with. You can see that my elevated word looks like a hot mess, but fear not because I'm gonna go in with my Waverly Cashew and because this word is elevated, it's gonna make it easy to put a nice thick coating of paint on there, covering up that red in turn, making it easy for this piece to look perfect and flawless and clean. The top of this plaque is just a bit too empty for my taste, so I dug into my galvanized words, picked out this welcome word, 
that I think will be the perfect addition to the top of this plaque. Using a sponge dabber to paint these galvanized words is the way to go. Well, really any galvanized piece. If you notice when you go to paint the galvanized pieces and you try to use a brush, it comes out very uneven. It comes out with brush strokes and you will find that you end up needing four or five coats to get full coverage. Who has time for that? Not me, not you. So by using a sponge dabber, you can dab on a good amount of paint. You're gonna get a nice thick even coverage on it and you're gonna save yourself a ton of time. I'm gonna hit the back of this plaque with a ton of hot glue. Even though this is gonna be outside, this plaque is really going to be sticking not so much to the plastic, but more to the burlap. So I am not worried about it falling off and it's in a shaded area anyway. So I am good to go. I've had people ask if I seal my pieces that are outside. I don't seal them because they are in a covered area and they are not in direct sunlight. I would say if your pieces are going to be in the elements of rain, then you might want to seal it. But for the most part, Pieces of mine that are out in the rain when it is going to rain, I do, I bring them in. So I went ahead, hot glued my plaque to it, hot glued my galvanized welcome word right there to the top. I love the way the offset welcome looks with this and this piece is just about done. We need to hang this piece. So just by flipping it over and adding another zip tie to the back, it is going to give you an easy DIY hanger using pieces that you already had for this DIY. Who is today's KB Creations crafters of the day? First one's going out to Selena Kaiser, who's bringing to us a recreation of my DIY 4th of July fireworks made out of the wood drawers from Dollar Tree. Sharon Ramsey's also got a recreation of these fireworks, and she's also bringing to us her recreation of my red, white, and blue blocks. Loving them both. Thank you both so much. We've also got a US flag from Sheila made out of Jenga blocks. Sheila, thank you so much for sharing your recreation with us today. Oh yeah, be good, come on. Good girl, Flynn, come on, Flynn. <laughs>
she wants to. Good girl, Good girl, Go get her, Go get her. Good girl, Gwen. Good girl, Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a clod hopper. <laughs> loving my red white and blue porch decor and I gotta tell you I am having so much fun decorating my porch for all of the seasons and the holidays this three foot stand I really wanted to do something just a bit different than saying welcome or freedom you don't really see any decor I guess in general that says 1776 on it and that's a pretty important date and so I like to do things a bit different and so I thought it would be fun to add that date to this sign. I hope you all enjoyed the sign and that quick and easy wreath using the plastic wreath form from Dollar Tree. Now I know it's somewhat of a repeat from the sunflower one that I did but because I have that burlap on hand already I figured why not it's gonna go and I love it. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, well, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive and have a happy and safe 4th of July. Bye for now, everybody.